Let's go live to the House of Representatives. Here's the Prime Minister moving a motion on this solemn anniversary. Each Australian to safeguard the harmony and unity that define our diverse society, especially in times of adversity. Mr Speaker, yesterday on the first anniversary of the October 7 attacks in Israel, we paused to reflect on the horrific terrorist atrocities that reverberated across the world. As we did last October, this parliament comes together again to unequivocally condemn Hamas's actions on that day. On October 7, Hamas sought only to kill and to terrify. They perpetrated their crimes without mercy and without discrimination. Men, women and children were subjected to acts of degradation and humiliation that, a year on, remained beyond comprehension. Yet Hamas made this waking nightmare of reality. They chose a holy day on the Jewish calendar to target young Israelis at a music festival, to hunt down men, women and children in their homes, to prey on families, on children and on parents trying to protect their children in what often proved to be their desperate final act. A year on from that day, when death emerged out of the sunshine, we reflect on all that happened and all the devastation that has followed. We think of the brutality and the cruelty that was inflicted on so many with such cold calculation. We think of all whose lives and futures were stolen from them that day as they tried to save themselves and their loved ones and all who have had them stolen since. We think of those whose lives remain suspended in the fear and isolation of captivity. And we think of those whose own lives and hearts are so intimately connected with the hostages who were kidnapped that day. Either through the bonds of blood or the embrace of friendship and community, this has been a year of pain, of loss and of grief. <clears throat> Last night I attended the vigil in Moorabbin, Melbourne, where I had the sombre privilege of meeting with a relative of Galit Carbon the Australian woman among those killed on that fateful day. I express my condolences and that of our nation. We also heard firsthand the experience of those who had relatives and friends, either killed by Hamas on that day, killed after being taken hostage, or those who remain hostages. Mr Speaker, for so many, this past year must have felt like a cruel eternity. The torment, which I spoke to friends and families of prior to the event last night, not knowing the fate of a loved one who's been taken hostage or indeed having the terrible truth confirmed. October 7 will always be a day of pain. As we mourn and reflect, we also reaffirm a fundamental principle of our shared humanity that every innocent life matters. Every Israeli, every Palestinian, every Lebanese, every single innocent life. It is the terrorists who close their eyes to that powerful, simple truth. It is the terrorists of Hamas that are not only enemies of Israel, they are an enemy of the Palestinian people as well. The number of civilians who have lost their lives over the past year is a tragedy of horrific proportions. An estimated 40,000 Palestinians have been killed. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is devastating. Our government has consistently and repeatedly called for a ceasefire, for the release of all hostages and for the protection of all civilians. We remain committed to a two-state solution as the path to an enduring peace. Two states, Israel and Palestine, living peacefully side by side with prosperity and security for their people, a position that has been bipartisan in this parliament for a long period of time. There can be no possibility of a just future without that. And let's be very clear. Australia's position is consistent with other democratic countries. I've issued multiple statements with Prime, the Prime Ministers of Canada and New Zealand. We know that it's only through diplomatic efforts as this cycle of conflict and bloodshed can be broken. 
escalation denies diplomacy any chance of working. On September 26, Australia joined with 11 other nations, including the US, Canada, France, Germany and the UK, Japan, to call for de-escalation. We agree with every word in the G7 statement of this week, and I quote, a dangerous cycle of attacks and retaliation risk fueling uncontrollable escalation in the Middle East, which is in no one's interest. Therefore, we call on all regional players to act responsibly and with restraint. We encourage all parties to engage constructively to de-escalate the current tensions. International humanitarian law must be respected. We also reiterate our call for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza, the unconditional release of all hostages, a significant and sustained increase in the flow of humanitarian assistance and an end to the conflict. We fully endorse the efforts by the US, Qatar and Egypt to reach such a comprehensive deal in line with United Nations Security Council Resolution 2735. The situation in Gaza is catastrophic and tens of thousands of innocent lives have been lost. We, re re we reiterate the absolute need for the civilian population to be protected and that there must be full, rapid, safe and unhindered humanitarian access as a matter of absolute priority. In his statement, marking the first anniversary of October 7, President Joe Biden said this, we will not stop working to achieve a ceasefire deal in Gaza that brings the hostages home, allows for a surge in humanitarian aid to ease the suffering on the ground, assures Israel's security and ends this war. Israelis and Palestinians alike deserve to live in security, dignity and peace. We also continue to believe that a diplomatic solution across the Israel-Lebanon border region is the only path to restore lasting calm and allow residents on both sides to return safely to their homes.